Welcome to another episode. My name is Jose Naharo, and today we are going to take a look at GameStop's financial documents. Like always, I have my buddies Darth Bear and Bull Solo ready to keep track to see how the company is doing. So let's get started. So in the last episode, we took a look at all the information that GameStop provided for us in their earnings report, all the information they talked about in their transcript, and we got to see what the leaders had to mention about GameStop. Today, we're going to take a look at the actual numbers and see how the company is doing overall. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the income statement sheet, and here we're going to take a look at revenue, cost of revenue, and gross profit. As we can see, revenue over the past few quarters has been decreasing and we can see that's one of the main reasons GameStop has taken a hit. That huge decrease of revenue from its peak at around 4 point, almost $3.7 billion to now peaking at about $2.62 billion. So losing over 33% of its revenue and continuing to go down every quarter. Cost of revenue does not seem to be taking the same hit and it seems like cost of revenue continues to stay around similar levels where revenue itself continues to decrease and we can see gross profit which is the difference between the two show that right we can see gross profit has this nice steady decrease and for that dark bear is going to take the point because that means that revenue is decreasing at a faster rate than cost of revenue and for that reason we're seeing that downtrend in gross profit next i want to take a look at the operating income the earnings before income tax and the net income so all these show incomes in different stages of the of the balance of the income statement after certain things have been subtracted and the only thing i really want to take a look at here is to see if there's any fluctuation or if there's any difference going on between all three income statement sheets i want to see that all three look pretty much the same and here i can see that operating income earnings before income and net income all have the same graph this to me means that there's no funny business going on within the company and you can if there was this would be one of the first place you would likely see it so for that reason i'm going to give a point to bull solo just for the no shadiness going on. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to give another point to Darth Bear though, because the actual value of the net income has has been neg is negative this quarter, and it has been negative for the past few quarters. Next, we're gonna take a look at my favorite document, and that's the balance sheet. Here, I feel like in the balance sheet, you can really see how the company is doing overall. The first thing I get to see is total assets versus total liabilities. And I can see total assets are continuing to decrease while total liabilities have this nice uptrend going on. So there and the next side, we're going to see shareholder equity, which is the difference between the two. And obviously, if assets continue to decrease and liabilities continue to increase, we're going to see that shareholder equity decrease. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Let's change this into quarterly value. And we can see, look, right now, the shareholder equity is sitting at 800 million dollars compared to its peak in 2011 where it was sitting at 3.03 oh pretty much three billion dollars or let's take even a closer look at 2017 where it was sitting at 2.3 billion dollars so even at 2017 this company has lost over half of its shareholder equity in less than two years so that's definitely that's that's definitely not a great thing so another point for Darth Bear here. Darth Bear is definitely racking up points with GameStop right now. All right, so next we're going to take a look at the asset distribution and liability distribution. Let's start off with liability distribution just because it's... Let's start with the bad news first, right? So we can see, right, first off the bat, the biggest liability distribution is pretty much just broken down into three, into three sections for this company. The first is non-current debt, which makes up a huge portion of the non-current liability sitting at $943 million, so almost $1 billion of non-current debt. And most of these I saw were actual leases done needed for, for, for the company's real estate. Next, we can see current debt is sitting at $240 million. And again, most of this is leases for operating, for operating real estate. And the final thing is payable sitting at $368 million. 
Next, we'll take a look at the asset distribution. And the asset distribution is actually broken up into a little more portions than liability distribution. The asset distribution, a huge portion, is made up of property, plants, and equipment. It's making up one point, about $1 billion. Then this company has about $425 million. That's actually not a bad amount of cash and cash equivalents. It has $122 million of receivables. And one of the things I actually like to look is compare receivables to payables. And this actually, well, this is one thing I normally don't see. No, most of the time, I see receivables being a lot higher than payables. But here is the other way around. Receivables is sitting at $122 million, while payable is $368 million. Almost a three to one, a one to three ratio right here. Payables to um, receivables to payables. And what I like to see here is usually. Uh, at least receivables to be higher because that to me can also can just cut off that part that portion of of liabilities but I, we can't do this for GameStop so for the liability distribution I'm gonna have to give a point to Darth Bear and the main reasons are one payables is so much greater than receivables which is something I don't like this company has actually a huge portion of current debt sitting at 240 million dollars that with payable, this company has a current liabilities of over $500 million um, left over. And that, that to me is actually a pretty high number. Next, we can see non-current debt is also a huge value compared to the company's total assets. So for that, Darth Bear gets a point for the liability distribution. Let's continue looking at the asset distribution to see what, or what we're going to find. One of the things I do like is intangible assets have decreased. It used to sit at about $2 billion. Now this company says that it's sitting at $0 of intangible assets. All the assets that this company has valued now are not our real, our true value assets. Um, where, you know, intangible assets are assets that can't really be put a price on. And I'm actually kind of happy that they've, that they've reduced this to $0. So to me, it means that the assets they're showing are real assets and not fake assets in some form. Next thing I want to take a look at is inventory. They did say that they want to manage inventory, and this is something actually that we're actually that we are seeing. We can see that inventory four quarters ago peaked at its highest at about two billion dollars, and right now it's sitting at nine hundred and fifty million dollars. It hasn't seen levels like this since two thousand and fifteen. So this company is definitely trying to manage its inventory, and so like we so intangibles have decreased to zero. This company is managing its inventory. It has a strong cash and cash equivalents, in, in my opinion, for for the overall right five hundred and uh, about four hundred cash and cash equivalents. When it has about five hundred of of current liabilities that we see, I actually like their asset distribution at the moment. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to give a point to Bull Solo here. I actually did not think that Bull Solo would get a point when taking a look at GameStop. But it's not a completely dead company just yet. Let's continue. Let's continue looking on. All right, next we're going to take a look at the cash flow statement. And the first thing we're going to take a look is net cash flow from operations. This is cash flow from its everyday use. And obviously, here is where you want to see money being made. If this company is not making money from its everyday use, then what's the point of having that company? And here we can see GameStop right now. It's pretty much flat, sitting at $18 million of net cash flow this quarter from operations. So for that pretty much low life number, we're going to have to give a point to Darth Bear. Next, I want to take a look at net cash flow from operations and compare it to revenue, right? So here, I'm not actually looking at the numerical value. I just want to make sure that the, that the graphs, again, are pretty similar. Because if revenue is going up, net cash flow from operations should be going up. If revenue is going down, net cash flow from operations should be going down, right? We, we need to see these in track. If these are not in track to me, it's telling me that there's something fishy going on. And here we can see net cash flow from operations is pretty much intact with revenue. So the next thing I want to take a look at is earnings per basic share and compare to the net cash flow from operations. Here again, I'm not trying to look at the numerical value. I just want to see if the graphs follow the same flow. And we can see perfectly here that normally it does follow the same flow. When earnings per basic share is peaked up, net cash flow from operations has that similar peak, and it follows that same wave. 
in the past few quarters, we have seen a little opposite of what's going on here. Starting since of, of let's see, this is 2000, December of 2018, net cash flow from operations was sitting at a, a very, at a peak. And unfortunately, earnings per basic share was sitting at a downward peak. This is one of the first few times where we see this opposite going on here. Yeah, so this is something that I have to take a look at this quarter and understand why we see this difference. If I can't really find a reason why, this is going to raise red flags. Finally, we're going to take a look at some metrics. These are my favorite metrics to take a look at. And it actually, again, tells a lot about the company. So let's see if we can learn some more about GameStop and determine is this company really going to go down the tube or if it might be a turnaround story. So the first thing we want to take a look at is debt to equity ratio. So debt to equity ratio is exactly right. Your total debt divided by your shareholder equity. So obviously here you want your shareholder equity to be higher than your debt. So that means you want a ratio less than one. That has not been the case for GameStop. We can see debt to equity ratio has been increasing. And right now it's actually sitting at a 2.6, 2.7 debt to equity ratio. That, that, means, that means that debt is 2.7 times larger than shareholder equity. And since that heavy increase is going on, I'm going to have to give a point to Dark Bear on this one. Next, we're going to take a look at current ratio. The current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. Obviously, here you want current assets to be higher than current liabilities. So you want a ratio of higher than one. GameStop has actually been able to maintain a ratio than one for almost all of its quarters. Right now, it's sitting at 1.3. That means this company has about 1.3 times more current assets than current liabilities. It actually looks like it's been increasing overall for from the company's average. So for that, I'm actually going to give a point to Bull Solo. Um, to my surprise, this company has actually gotten more points from Bull Solo than I thought were going to come. Um, so next, we're going to take a look at gross margin. And I can tell you right off the bat, Darth Bear is going to get a point from here. You can see gross margin continues to decrease and it has this downtrend, right? You can see this downtrend perfectly. Right now, it's sitting at about 31%, 31% of gross profit, where at its peak was sitting at 37 so it's it's about 700 basis point that is gone. That's actually a uh, it's a lot less than I thought it would be. But just that downtrend going on, Dark Bear is definitely gonna get the point. Profit margin, forget about it. That forget about it. Look at it. This company right now has a negative profit margins, and that's why we can see that this month this company is still burning money. So, right, this company is burning money, right? Even though it has a positive gross margin, at the end of the day, this company can't no money with its negative profit margin. So, another point for Darth Bear. So, we ended the last episode deciding at what we would value this company. So, what would, we, what would I personally value GameStop? Um, GameStop, right, it's definitely it's a company that's losing money. A company that has a pretty high debt ratio, not a not a big not a big fan of its liability distribution, but I'm 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 kind of a fan of its asset distribution. It's a company that's slowing down in revenue, a decrease in revenue, um, but it has a negative it has a negative profit margins, and it has what else did we see? Um, what other big things did we see about GameStop? It has a huge um, debt to equity ratio of about 2.5 what was it 3.5 um, so that's definitely not a good thing we're seeing the decrease in shareholder equity but at the same time right GameStop does seem to have a future plan uh, we take a look at last episode to see what the future plans of this company are and right we can't tell if those are Great plans because we would have to be in the future to determine the see the results of those plans. But for the company to actually have a plan, they are being smarter with their money because they're slowing down on the inventory. They're doing smart inventory management. They cancel paying dividends, which I thought was a pretty smart a pretty smart move. And it does seem like they understand that they need a shift away from from what they're currently doing. Are they going to be able to do that? That's the unknown. But there is a chance here. So as an investor, as an investor, a val if, if I was a value investor, I would not 
uh, I would not even think about GameStop at the moment, right? If maybe GameStop to me would be what one would call uh, where you would invest slowly just because there are there is a chance that the company can turn around, right? If we take a look at it, the company is not completely dead. And it actually is if if it it's still at the point where it can turn around. And that's why this company still has a, a, a forward P ratio higher than one. Right now, right, we can see this company has a forward P ratio uh, has S earnings earnings per share estimate of a dollar and seventeen cents. And at the moment when I did this previous slide, it had a 3.9 PE ratio, forward PE ratio for 2021. I personally don't think I would give it a, a, a almost a four forward PE ratio. I personally would probably at most give it a 3.5 PE forward PE ratio with what it's currently doing, right? I would have to take a look at the next quarter. But with the 3.5 PE ratio sitting at, let's take a look. At 117, what would this company be valued at? This company, I, I, I feel like $4.10 or anything below that would be an okay time for me to buy GameStop if I was looking for a company that that could change around and can actually can actually re return, right? If this company does turn around and does good, the returns can actually be pretty high. Uh, so it's, it's a company that if I was to invest in, I definitely wouldn't put in my normal investing investing value. It would be something much smaller. So anything below four four dollars and ten cents would be a decent buy in my opinion. And we can see that this company was actually sitting at three dollars and twenty cents for some time a few uh, about a month ago, and that actually would have been a great time um, to actually look at this company. So it's something I'm going to take a look at and wait for it to to hit below four dollars and ten cents. So let me know what you guys think. Would you guys even touch about, even think about touching GameStop at, a, at such a low PE ratio of 3 or 3.5? Why or why not? I hope you guys enjoyed the episodes. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what company you guys want me to take a look at. Have a good night and see you next time.